If you've been with me from the beginning of Vlogmas, you'll know I've given away a free template every day and they're all designed to build on one another. So in today's video, I thought I'd share with you my contacts database, which doesn't sound all that interesting, but this is how I manage my direct outreach strategy responsible for most of the sales that I generate in my business. Now, I'm not only going to walk you through that, but I'm going to show you how you can connect that to the projects database and the sales CRM databases we've already covered. And then I'm going to walk you through my sales and revenue dashboard. And this is where all of these databases come together. The result is a step by step process to follow to generate new leads, sign new clients, manage clients perfectly, and then track our results and performance with our scorecard. All of these databases have been shared throughout the month of Vlogmas. You can access all of them just by signing up to my newsletter. The link is in the description. Now the sales and revenue dashboard I'm sharing at the end is available for purchase, but you can absolutely rebuild it yourself. As I said, all of the databases have been shared so far. Just think of that as a shortcut if you don't want to put it together yourself. Okay, so welcome to your contacts database. This is the template I'm giving away for free today. If you want access, you can click the link in the description and sign up to my newsletter. So what I thought we'd do is we'd go through this template. I'm gonna show you how it connects to other databases. And then right at the end, I'm also going to show you how I use this in conjunction with those other databases in sales and revenue dashboard that I've built out. So the sales and revenue dashboard is more for inspiration. I do have that template available for purchase, but after seeing this, you can absolutely go ahead and build out your own. It's relatively straightforward and I'm gonna show you how it works too. So if we start back at your contacts database, you'll see here, you just put the person's name, their pronouns. I like to upload an image. I usually get this from Twitter or LinkedIn. And then we have the last contact. So when we last were in touch with them. And then here I've got three columns. This is a little checkbox that says keep in touch. And then here I can put in how many days before I next want to reach out to them. Now, there's a couple of things we can do here. We actually don't need all three of these columns. If you want to keep it easy for yourself, you can click the plus icon. You can hit date. You could put next contact. I will drag this over. And what you can do is you can just select the next date you want to be in touch with them. So for example, I could put the 14th of December and I can even set a little reminder here. So if you want to keep things simple, you can go ahead and add this next contact date column and you can use that. If not, you can use this system that I've put in place. When it comes to contacts, I would love to reach out all the time to everyone, but I don't have that much time in a day and it often escapes me. So as much as this is important, my sales CRM where I'm managing clients is much more important. So I'll definitely put next contact and set a reminder up there. But when it comes to managing, say, my community and things like that, I will just have this system in place instead. And so what this does is I can just put this checkbox of do I want to keep in touch with them? How often? So I'll put a number of days here. So if I want to keep in touch with them weekly or monthly, and then based on that, it's just going to roll up and give me a status of do I need to reach out or am I good? So for example, if I just put way into the future, you'll see here it says no action required. And so rather than setting reminders for myself, I will just go ahead and use this system. I've included it because it's using formulas and things. I've included it so you can use that. But like I said, if you prefer to just do next contact as a date form, that works too. Then we have relation type. So I've just put a few options in here. We've got client, brand partner, affiliate. To add a new type, you would just start typing. For example, community would be one. These are people that you're connected with on social media and things. You can then add their birthday. And here I usually do set a reminder so that I can remember to say happy birthday to them. Their email, phone, website. And then here I've got two relations. And I'll show you how I've set that up in a second. As always, I have a drop down template here for you as well. So you can click into any of these contacts. And you'll see here, you can add some more information. So background information, contact information, important reminders. 
And you'll see here, I've got likes and dislikes and then gift ideas. So one little trick that I've used on social media since I've been online is to really pay attention to what people are tweeting about. And if I see something I really think will be useful in the future, I will grab that information and I'll pop it in here. For example, if someone says they really love a certain type of cake or donuts, you can bet that's what I'm gonna order them for their birthday and send it to them as a complete surprise. And of course they come back and they say, how could you have possibly known that I love this thing? And they don't know that they tweeted about it like nine months ago and I've just been storing it in here ever since waiting for that birthday reminder. So this can be really helpful. And even in terms of if you're taking a relationship to the next level and you're jumping on a call, you're able to touch on things. So if you know they have certain family members, you can ask how they're doing. We share a lot more on social media than we think and all we have to do is pay attention. And this right here reminds me to pay attention. So it's a really great way to not have to spend too much time nurturing every single contact, but just being very observant and taking notes when you can so that even if you're not talking to them all the time, every interaction feels personal, you feel connected, and it's because you are taking the time to invest in them. So that's how I do that. Now let's come back over here because I want to show you these two relations. To add any relation, you just click the plus icon, you search for relation, and what this allows you to do is to connect to a different database. So you would find the database you want to connect to, you would select it. I'm just going to choose this one for now. You would click show on that database as well, add the relation. And what that does is it allows you to then click through and connect the two. So here I've got contacts connected to projects. So I will click in and if I'm working with a client, for example, I can come in here and I can connect them to the projects. And then same with my sales CRM. So I think we have Levi Tate here. So what I can do is I can come along here and you'll see I've connected it to the sales CRM. And so I'm keeping track of everything. Everything is speaking to each other and it works really well. And here I've just got a different view. So same database, but I've got a gallery view and you'll see here I'm showing the person's image. So I've clicked in here, I've selected gallery. I've selected card preview as their profile picture. I've kept the card size small, but you could change this here. And then under properties, I've got their pronouns and I've got that status. So I can come in here and I can look through and I can also filter status as reach out. And that will show me who I need to reach out to. And like I said, I like that method because too many reminders would just get lost. I would stop checking them and I would stop using them. So I like this method better, but as I said, you can always put in a date there and it works just as well. And so that's my contacts database and that's the database that I'm going to manage my direct outreach strategy. And how I do that is I have built a sales and revenue dashboard and direct outreach is a part of that. So I'm gonna show you my dashboard. I'm gonna show you how it's set up, how I use it. And I will also walk you through how you can create your own of course, if you want to skip all that and you just want to purchase it, I'll include a link to that paid dashboard in addition to this free database that you can access. So if I just come out here, we're going to select sales and revenue dashboard and you'll see here, this is what it looks like. This is a duplication. So that's why we've got the one, but you'll see here, I've got it set up in stages. So I know exactly what to do. It's walking me through step by step every time. So at the top here, I have my core offers. I have a link to a pricing calculator so I can figure out how much I should be charging for my core offers. And then once I've got the items that I, I plan on selling, it's now time to reach out and build relationships. So you'll see here, I've got my direct outreach strategy. On the side, I've got my targets for each week. So I'll set a target of how many people I need to reach out to every week. And what I'll do is I'll have all my contacts. Now here under this view, I've got add a new contact. So if I make a new connection, I'll come in here and I'll add them. Then I've got my Rolodex. And what I'll normally do is add that filter to reach out and I will prioritize those people first. Then I'll look at birthdays and you'll see here I've started it by birthday is ascending. So I could come in here and say, okay, is there any birthdays coming up? Do I need to reach out to anyone? And then I've got all contacts. And I've grouped them by coming over here to group. 
selecting relationship type here and I've broken that down into the different relationships I can go through here and start making those connections reaching out to people and building a relationship once I've done that I then want to sign new clients so yesterday we shared a sales CRM system in Notion make sure to go ahead and watch that video if you haven't seen it already but this is where I will then set my targets here I've got my sales CRM I've got add a new lead I've got my pipeline, which is just another view and I can focus on moving people through this process. And then I also have a different database, which we haven't discussed, called sales assets. And sales assets is basically anything that can help me close a sale. Things like testimonials, case studies, reviews, my services guide, all of that goes in here and I can use that when I'm having conversations with clients and I'm trying to close the sale. So that is one thing that we haven't talked about but is included with the dashboard here that I'm showing you. And then it's time to manage clients perfectly. So again, earlier in the week, we talked about projects and action tasks. This is just a projects database. You'll see here it's connected to contacts and it's connected to sales CRM. So once I've signed a client, I will then come in here. I will set up their project. If you click the drop down, you'll see here I've got new client project set up. Then I have a view for all my active clients and I've got another view per status, which is just a Kanban board view and it is broken down by what phase we're at. Then we've got our KPI scorecard. And again, this is something I have shared previously. The difference is with this one, I have it set up with actual metrics and you can come in here and you can change those metrics. You can add new ones just by clicking plus, selecting number, giving it a name, giving it an icon, choosing the number format and then at the bottom coming down here and choosing if you want to calculate the sum or if you want to calculate the average. To delete any of these columns, hit delete and there we have it. So you can come in here, you can type in your goals and then we have direct outreach. So how many people did you reach out to? How many new leads did you get? How many sales calls did you make? How many sales did you close? What was your total revenue? What was your affiliate revenue? If you do that or partners and sponsors and then I've also got revenue by whatever it is you're selling up here on top in core offers. So this sales and revenue dashboard is designed to walk you through everything. Like I said, it's got a few extras. So we've covered contacts, we've covered projects, we've done scorecard. We only The only thing we haven't covered is sales assets and pricing calculator. So if you want access to this dashboard, I'll include a link in the description. But like I said, it's pretty straightforward. This is just a table. This is your contacts database. This is your sales pipeline. And then we have your projects and then we have your scorecard. And all of these databases I have given access to you for free for this month. All you have to do is sign up to my newsletter so you don't have to buy the dashboard. It's just there as a shortcut. I hope this has been helpful and a good insight into how I generate leads and sales in my business. A lot of it is just a case of direct outreach. A lot of my work comes from word of mouth or conversations and I usually always close the sale on a call. I know calls and meetings are not popular these days but I find it to be the most effective way to close sales. So I'm always trying to build those relationships to get on a Zoom call because I know that if I can get them on a Zoom call I'm in a good position to convert a client. Now, if you like today's video, there's a really good chance you'll also like tomorrow's. I'm gonna to be showing you how I create and send brand proposals off to clients in Notion, making it really easy for them to access and even sign the document right on the page itself. Be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified when I release that video. As always, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you again tomorrow.